So let's begin the introduction to the endocrine system. And let's look at our learning objectives. The first one is to name the primary and secondary organs, endocrine glands and the hormones associated with each. So when we think about the endocrine system, um, this is one of the most integrated systems in the body because the glands and organs are pretty much dispersed throughout the body. And we have two main sort of primary control centers in the brain that release multiple hormones, which then go out into the blood and will uh, reach their target organs. And then those target organs also release other hormones. So it's a very integrated system and it's scattered throughout multiple regions in the body, from the abdominal cavity to the thoracic cavity, to the neck region where we have the thyroid, uh, et cetera. Another important um, aspect of the endocrine system is that the glands are derived from epithelial tissue. So epithelial cells, which are what form all of our body cavities, the skin, the internal lumen of the GI tract, the respiratory tract, et cetera, those same epithelial cells also form glandular tissue. So they have the ability to secrete and produce a lot of the hormones that need to be released. And then the third unique feature of the endocrine system is that it must use the blood. So the release of these hormones must go into the blood and then be dispersed to their peripheral tissues. And this is where an endocrine gland differs from an exocrine gland. An exocrine gland like the pancreas, the liver, or even the salivary glands, they release their secretions into ducts and directly onto those tracts of, or the lumen of those uh, tracts. Uh, endocrine glands, however, release their secretions into the blood. So just to kind of review here, they are epithelial tissue derived. They have uh, a difference between primary endocrine organs, which are um, their main role is to secrete these hormones versus secondary endocrine organs, where they have another primary function, but in accessory to that, they can also release hormones. Now, some of the primary glands are gonna be the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. Both of these structures are found in the brain. Um, the hypothalamus itself is not a gland, it is a region of the brain, while the pituitary is a smaller gland below the hypothalamus. The pineal gland is another gland in the brain that mainly is responsible for hormone release. The thyroid and parathyroids, both of these are located in the uh, sort of neck region, right? The cervical region here. And they are sort of both in one structure, right? The parathyroid glands are embedded in the back of the thyroid gland itself. So they're kind of one general structure, but two separate hormones and two separate functions that we'll talk about. The thymus. Now the thymus is located anterior to the heart and its role is also primarily in hormone release, more so in the immune function. Um, they're going to be responsible for the maturation of uh, our immune cells. This is why the thymus is not usually seen in adults. It's usually um, pretty prominent uh, up until puberty when that immune cell maturation is happening. And then beyond puberty, it pretty much involutes or atrophies to become a very small, massive fat. So the thymus is one of those unique glands that's not usually prominent beyond puberty. The adrenal glands, these are usually uh, above the kidneys. So we have two of them, bilateral, and they have two different parts. We've talked about the medulla, which is the inner part of the gland, when we look at the autonomic nervous system, but the outer part of the gland called the cortex is a part of the endocrine system. And then lastly, the gonads, which are the, um, the region that has the uh, gametes or the sex cells in uh, males and females respectively, so the testes in males and then ovaries in females. Now, some of the secondary endocrine glands, so again, these have another primary function, like the heart, for example, which is the circulatory system, but it does play a secondary role in hormone release. So the heart can release atrial natriuretic peptide, or ANP, and that has an influence on our sodium and water balance. So that is a, an endocrine-related function. The kidneys release of erythropoietin, which is important in new blood cell production. The GI tract releases several hormones. So CCK or cholecystokinin, secretin, 
gastrin, which all play a role in gastric motility and digestion and absorption. Uh, the liver releases insulin-like growth factor, which is important in just growth and maturation of many body tissues. And then the skin as well can be involved in the uh, processing of vitamin D, right? Processing of sunlight in order to produce vitamin D into its active form. And lastly, fat. So fat tissue can also release hormones such as leptin, which do have a role on our hunger and satiety. So these accessory organs um, have another primary function, but as we can see, are intimately involved in a lot of hormone regulation. Let's go on to the second objective, which is to describe the links between the hypothalamus with the anterior and posterior pituitary lobes. Now, when you think about the hypothalamus, this is a part of the brain, right? It's this sort of central region of the brain um, that connects to the pituitary gland, it sort of narrows and connects to the pituitary gland. The pituitary is dangling beneath, excuse me, the hypothalamus. It has two lobes, an anterior lobe, which is larger, and a posterior lobe, which is smaller. It also has an infundibulum. So that infundibulum is that connecting stalk between the hypothalamus above and the pituitary gland below. Now, when we think about the hypothalamus, it's really hard to conceptualize this region just because it's kind of a space here. But what's important is the presence of a lot of neurons. We're going to talk about the neurons that are here found in this region that are involved in uh, the release of hormones from the pituitary gland and will communicate down to the pituitary gland by way of the infundibulum stalk. Let's think about the neurohormones. And so neurohormones are hormones that are secreted by neurons instead of the endocrine glands themselves. So this is what I mean by thinking about the hypothalamus in terms of the uh, cell bodies of neurons that are residing here. So there are uh, peptide hormones, two of them, that are released from the posterior pituitary, but they're actually made up here in the hypothalamus. So the first is antidiuretic hormone, also called ADH or vasopressin. This is made in the paraventricular nucleus. And a nucleus here is just a cluster of cell bodies that are in the, the CNS or central nervous system. And so the cell bodies make this ADH, but the neurons project down into the posterior pituitary uh, from where these hormones can be released. So they're not actually made in the posterior pituitary, but they are released from the posterior pituitary by the projections of these axons down into the posterior pituitary. Another hormone that um, is associated with this is oxytocin. And similarly, oxytocin is made in the superoptic nucleus, so another cluster of cell bodies in the hypothalamus. And then it is projected by these axons down into posterior pituitary, and it will be released here. The action or function of ADH is water balance. So it's going to help to prevent diuresis, right? Anti-diuresis is going to stop water release from the kidneys, and then oxytocin is going to be involved in milk ejection. So not necessarily milk production, which is another hormone that we'll talk about, but milk ejection, the letdown or the release of milk from the mammary glands. So that was the posterior pituitary. Now let's think about the anterior pituitary. And this is a different sort of mechanism of release. It's not releasing by way of the neurons projecting down into the gland. Instead, this is involved in what is called a portal system or portal circulation. The hormones here are going to be trophic in that they can regulate the secretion of another hormone. And in doing that, they can either stimulate the secretion of another, another hormone or they can inhibit the secretion of another hormone. And the portal system by which they do that is linking to capillary beds. So what do we mean by that? So when hormones are released from the hypothalamus, here are the newer secretory hormones that are going to be releasing um, these trophic hormones. It's going to be picked up in the capillary beds of the blood vessels that are flowing through the hypothalamus. And usually blood vessels flow through one organ tissue. They exchange 
hormones, nutrients, oxygen at one capillary bed, and then that will go to veins and then back to the heart. In a portal circulation, the capillary bed takes two stops before going back to the heart. So we have the exchange or basically release of hormones at this first capillary bed. And notice how the blood here is coming in red because it's oxygenated or well oxygenated. And then because we have one um, you know, initial set of exchange happening here, the blood is now purple because we've lost some oxygen. That blood now goes to another capillary bed down in the anterior pituitary. And so the hormones that are picked up here can be dropped off here in the anterior pituitary, and they are going to cause the cells of the anterior pituitary to either stimulate hormone release or to inhibit hormone release of various types of hormones. From there, whether that hormone is released or inhibited, uh, that regulation will have an impact on the blood that is leaving the anterior pituitary and going back out into the circulation, namely back to the heart, right? And so if hormones are released into the blood, they will go out to various peripheral organs, such as the thyroid gland, the adrenal, all of those glands that we looked at earlier. And then these hormones are going to encourage the glands to release other hormones. So we can already begin to see this hierarchy, right? There's the hypothalamus, which is the master sort of control center or the CEO, if you will. The pituitary, which is kind of that secondary mid-level manager, right? Kind of um, regulating what the instructions from the hypothalamus are. And then the third tier or the bottom tier would be all of the peripheral uh endocrine glands, so the thyroid, the ovaries, the testes, et cetera, which are going to be receptive to the hormones released from the anterior pituitary. Okay, so the blood with the trophic hormones enters the portal vein, and a portal vein is just a vein that is leaving one capillary bed and going to another before going back to a true vein or back to the heart. It's going to drop off those trophic hormones at the anterior pituitary. They are going to either stimulate or inhibit the cells of the anterior pituitary. And then the hormones released from the anterior pituitary will enter the bloodstream here and then go out to encourage the distant endocrine glands to release their secretions. 